Hey, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I want to talk about something or explain something. I want to explain something for you today that I haven't seen explained very well anywhere else on the internet. Now, as you know, I do educational explanational videos. I try and take complex concepts and turn them into simple things using analogies and so forth. And in this case, I want to talk about something called your washout. Now, something that affects all multi-rotors to some degree or another, but most notably, it affects these cine quads, the quads that have these ducts. The propellers operate in a tube, in a duct. Uh, this is an earlier version of a cine quad. You know, it's got quite deep ducts. And these things are designed so that you can bang into objects and people. You're not going to kill anybody. You're not going to rip them apart. The props are not less likely to be damaged. Um, more recently, the newer versions, they have somewhat smaller ducts. They're not so deep and they're made of different materials but the whole thing is there the duct's still there that makes it into a whoop and these ducts actually affect the way the quad handles they affect the performance the flight characteristics of the quad now if you have an open quad like this pretty much they're viceless they'll do whatever you tell them to if you tell it to to your left it'll your left your right it'll your right and it doesn't have, if you've got it tuned properly they don't have any bad handling characteristics these different kettle of fish with one of these little quads, they have a thing called your washout, which means if you're going really, really fast in a forward direction and you put a yaw in and go sideways, sometimes they go all wobbly. They might even just, you might even lose control just for a moment and then they'll pick themselves up and carry on. That, that, that your instability, that, 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 or the instability produced by that yawing is called your washout. And as I say, it's very common with these. Some of them, this one is actually pretty good. I tried really hard. I went out and wanted to get some examples of your washout and I pushed this thing really hard and as you'll see it does it but it's not very bad it's, it, it picks itself up very quickly and carries on flying the DJI Avata however hmm bit of a different kettle of fish because of the way it's designed because of some of the design decisions they've made it is very prone to your washout in fact the manual even suggests that you shouldn't do fast flat your turns because it can cause instability and by jingos it does um, if you go to Mads Tech and look at I'll put some videos in the description go down and click on the videos down there you'll see examples of this your washout with the Avata and how it's caused people to crash some people have even lost their drones um, important things to watch if you're flying a DJI Avata now I did a video did a review based on other people's experiences and I said hey this Avata looks like a pretty good quad and I'm not changing my position on that it still looks like a pretty good quad as long as you're aware of the limitations and as long as DJI repair what appears to be a somewhat deeper problem than just your washout now it's a problem that seems to be triggered by your washout but it's not actually your washout that is the real problem here in the case of the Avata what seems to happen sometimes is you do a very high rate fast yaw and instead of just wobbling as you might expect it flips inverted and then drives itself down into the ground and continues thrusting itself into the ground until the battery is ejected or you pull the battery lead that is not normal behavior it indicates Maybe a flight control has crashed or something. The, the, the rapid yaw has precipitated a condition. Maybe the rapid wobble afterwards has precipitated a condition that has overloaded the flight controller. The flight control has given up and said, I'm heading back to China. And that seems to be what happens. As I say, this is conjecture at the moment. I don't have a Nevada. DJ are not likely to send me one. And I'm not going to buy one because I can't fly it at the local airfield. Um, so I'm speculating based on all the information available to hand. And more importantly, this video is not about speculating so much as explaining to you the, the aerodynamics and the principles behind the effect called your washout. We'll go over to the whiteboard now, my virtual whiteboard, and I'll try and explain it all to you in as simpler terms as I can. G'day, let's take a look at the phenomenon called your washout. And what I've done here is I've drawn an avatar perfectly to scale and coloured accurately, as you'll see. Couldn't miss that. This is the top plan view. This is the front elevation. This is the side elevation. You notice on an angle, I'll tell you why in a moment. But let's examine the mechanism whereby propellers create enough lift to lift our avatar off the ground. Well, we have a propeller and it's in a duct. As you can see, I've drawn a cross section. Imagine that, no, it's, it's actually the cross section is this way. Let's imagine I've drawn a cross section through there. So there's the duct that surrounds the propellers on both sides here. Let's put a bit of hatching in there so you can see these are the ducts. Well, that's the duct. Here's your motor. Um, this is the propeller. And this is how the propeller produces lift. It sucks air down from the top, blows it out the bottom. Newton says for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So for the air going down this way, there is a lift vector which operates here and through the motor and the arm on the frame, lifts the quad off the ground. And we're hovering. It's all fine and dandy. There's nothing to see here, nothing to write home about. It's all very simple. But of course, 
we don't just hover. We like to move forward. And this is where our side elevation here comes in. This is a, a Nevada moving in that direction. And why is it tilted like that? Well, because when we hover, we have a thrust vector that is vertical, that the air goes straight down. And that means we don't move it anywhere except up and down. But when we want to move forward, we've got to add in an opposite vector. And this is our desired direction of movement. So according to Newton, the force has to be equal and opposite. So we need to direct some of this air out the back. And we could have a propeller, propeller on the back that just pushed, but the easier way is to tilt the quad up. So now it has a vertical element, which is providing the lift to keep it off the ground, and a horizontal element, which is providing the push forward. And if you would add those together, you get a thrust vector that looks like this, which is at right angles to the, the plane of the propeller. So this is a right angle in here, and therefore we get forward movement. It's pretty straightforward, not a problem. Now let's look at our duct. In a hovering situation, the air comes straight in from the top, not a problem. When we start moving, let's let's assume we're going to move our, our whole thing this way. Um, so let's assume we're moving our duct this way. That means air starts coming in from the side. There is now a horizontal element to this vector for the air, right? Remember we had these two elements here, horizontal and a vertical produces an angle in between. Well, that means the air is now suddenly coming in from this angle, right? And again, this isn't a problem because the air comes along and where, where this duct here, it doesn't do much. It doesn't get in the way of much of the air. So it... It's like the duct isn't even there because of this angle. If we draw this here, there's the uh, plane of the propeller. Here's our forward movement. We've got this angle here, and that angle is not a right angle. So it's it's sufficient for the air to flow smoothly. But what happens um, if... Let me just delete some of this stuff because I can. Um, let's get rid of these things here. Um, what happens if we take our quad and we're flying forwards in this direction? And we suddenly put a whole lot of yaw in there. We, we punch that lift stick right over and it yaws like this. Let's say it yaws this way, right? Suddenly now, after it's rotated 90 degrees, the air is coming in this way because the quad is now moving this way. So we've got an airflow that comes in from the side, right? And because the quad is flat, because it's not traveling forward, it's now sitting flat. It's a flat yaw turn, as we call it, flat yaw turn. Um, we have air coming in directly from the side, and that air doesn't just go doot, 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 doot into there. No, no, no. Air's not that not that friendly or not that uh, amenable to being changed direction. We have a 90 degree bend as you do here. Air just becomes a turbulent rolling mess. So we get a we get a vortex or a, a turbulent flow over the lip of that duct. And propellers, well, they don't like turbulence. They don't perform very well in turbulence. It's a bit like trying to tread water at the bottom of a waterfall. If there's a lot of air in the water you'll sink. In fact, that's a warning. You go to the waterfalls, don't swim at the bottom of the waterfall because the amount of air in the water will cause you to sink no matter how good swimmer you are. It's the same here. When you get enough turbulence in this air, no matter how good your propeller is, it's not going to produce the same amount of lift. So suddenly we have a reduction in lift from our propellers, from our ducts. And this may affect them all at once or individually. It just depends on slight angles and changes in direction and so forth. But we're going to get a reduction in lift. Now, in the Avata, this is even more pronounced, but basically what happens is this reduction in lift can cause one or more of the propellers to lose a lot of thrust. And if that happens, then the other propellers, of course, will still be pushing and you'll get a sudden change of your, sorry, a sudden change of roll or a sudden change of pitch. And this is what we call your washout. When you yaw very quickly in fast forward flight, then the quad is likely to pitch up or down or roll left or right very, very quickly, but it doesn't go too far. It might go 45 degrees and then the gyros kick in and it stabilizes itself. It, um, the, when, when you lose a certain amount of thrust, the motor will speed up to compensate for the turbulent airflow and restore the thrust to bring the quad back to straighten level. In fact, I flew my uh, Foxius, what the Fox Whoop 25. I went out and deliberately tried to make it really, really see some your washout. And here's some of the footage. You notice I fly fast, I spin it around quickly, and there's a lot of bobbling. It wobbles and shakes and things, but very quickly it's back to level, back to level, back to stable. That's because there's enough power here to overcome the loss of thrust that the turbulence causes in the propeller. And that's in a suitably designed craft, you get that enough extra power to compensate for that. But you still get that washout, which causes it to wobble and bobble about because it, it has to move before the gyros know it's moving. So the gyros can only compensate after it's happened. But let's take a look at the Avata. Why is the Avata then doing some silly stuff? Why is it that people are reporting their Avata flips right upside down and crashes? It doesn't just do a your washout, but it actually flips completely inverted. Why, why would it do that? What's going on there? Well, let's uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff here. Because, as I said, this is a cross-section through here, right? 
cross section through there. And there's one thing, this big black thing here, this is the battery. Let's put the battery in here. Here's the battery. Here's the battery. Great big hulking battery there. And you can see the battery here on, on the front elevation. Now, if we've got air coming from the side, you can have a bit of turbulence caused over the lip of these ducts. But more importantly, air traveling over here is going to get really turbulent. So the air that travels over the top here is not going to go 90 degrees. It's going to turbulate. You're going to get this massive rolling wave of turbulence that will possibly even cover the entire duct. So instead of just losing a bit of lift, you might lose almost all the lift. And there's no way in the Avata the motor is strong enough to compensate. And once you've stalled that propeller, no amount of extra power will actually restore the lift because all you're doing is just making noise and chewing the air up further. It's not creating any lift once the prop stalls. And if this turbulence is enough, then the propeller will stall. Parts of the propeller will be stalled. And therefore, these other motors are still lifting. So you're suddenly going to get a massive change of pitch or roll to the point where it could actually flip right upside down because of this, this design, the this silly design with this great big tall battery here. You notice most other cine whoops that are on the market don't have a great big tall battery like that, which produces this massive rolling turbulence in a, in a fast side yaw, traveling fast sideways. So I think that's part of the problem. It's not the whole problem. It's not the whole problem because even then you would expect that once this had flipped upside down, well, your turbulence isn't going to be that much of a problem. It would right itself. And sometimes it does. If you look at the videos, sometimes people, when they ha this happens, it goes into normal mode and the quad rights itself very quickly and you might lose, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 feet, maybe more. Um, but it just recovers and you can continue flying it. However, in some cases, something completely different is happening. Some cases, this thing is flipping upside down far more quickly than I would expect to happen from just a your washout. Because it's almost as if the flight controller has been driven to its limit. It's been overloaded by the sudden rotation and the sudden need to rev up motors and change things very quickly. And the flight controller just says, I give up. <laughs> I give up. It's too hard. And we're getting what looks to be, I can't be sure about this, but it just looks to be a flight controller crash. That is to say, the flight controller is no longer stabilizing the craft. In fact, it appears as if the flight controller gets so confused it thinks it's upside down and it it when the craft, well, thinks when the craft is upside down, it's the right way up and it powers itself into the deck. It's like unbelievable. It just crashes into the ground and keeps revving until you pull the battery off. And it, this fast your washout is not the only way to precipitate this flight controller crash. I've seen people also who have been hovering in normal mode and they have then transitioned to manual mode and the quad has immediately pitched forward and crashed into the ground at full speed with the motors revving, requiring removal of the battery to stop the whole thing from catching fire. Now, that should never happen because to transition from normal mode to manual mode, you must have your stick centered. So there is no pitch input. You're not pushing forward on the pitch stick. So the fact that as soon as it transitioned to manual mode, it pitched sharply forward, it wasn't an operator input. The flight controller, something caused the flight controller to crash in a way that it stopped stabilizing the craft and tried to make it fly to China. These things need to be addressed by DJI. They may be rare, not common, but they do exist. And I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there is a deeper problem here. That is that this this your, this fast your washout is precipitating the problem. The problem lo probably lies in the flight controller or the gyros or the setup or the software. And normally it's not an issue, but when it, things get extreme, like a very rapid your washout that causes a very sudden pitch or roll to the craft, suddenly the flight controller crashes and it's all over. You've lost control of that craft and it's going to bury itself in the ground. May only happen one in 10,000 flights, maybe one in 5,000 flights. We don't know. We don't have any figures yet. It's too early because you must remember that a lot of the people now flying the Avata have previously flown the, the Mavic or the Mini. Um, they're not used to flying in manual mode. They're probably not flying a lot in manual mode. And this seems to happen predominantly in manual mode because you have more control over the craft. It seems that most people are not going to be pushing the envelope hard enough to cause this problem to occur, which would then precipitate the flight controller crash, if that's what it is. So it, it's a, it's something we'll probably like to see happening more in future as people start pushing the limits, as they start going to manual mode, and they start doing fast your turns, flat your turns, then we might see this becoming an increasing problem if DJI don't address the cause of it. So it's going to be interesting, very interesting to see. Now, notice in the manual, as Mads Tech says, uh, he brought this up in the manual, as they advise against doing this rapid flat turn thing because, you know, it may cause instability. Well, yeah, um, and it is a known problem with cine whoops for the reasons I've mentioned. When you have airflow coming from the side of the duct, it creates turbulent flow, the propeller produces less lift, and it can cause this massive rapid pitching and yawing. 
But in most Cine Whoops, it is perfectly controllable. The flight controller kicks in, good enough power to, to sort the thing out, and the flight controller continues to function. It doesn't crash. It doesn't give up and drive the thing into the ground. So, yeah, this is a DJI-specific thing. I'm pretty sure it is. And if it really was something as simple as that you're yawing too fast, then DJI could have simply said, we'll limit the yaw rate. If they limited the yaw rate, limited yaw rate, then they could have nipped this in the bud because it does require quite a rapid rate of yaw and quite a bit of forward speed to get this happening. If they limited the yaw rate, then the flight controller would have time to compensate for the, the, the reduction in thrust that was being caused by the gradual, you know, if you imagine when you're flying forward, the air's flowing this way. As you start yawing, it starts to come around. So you start getting turbulence um, and the turbulence gets bigger and bigger as you until you get totally sideways. The flight controller should have enough, you know, ability to compensate long before it gets to the point where these would be totally stored. Uh, stalled, sorry. So this is an interesting situation, isn't it? We, we're all speculating at this stage. We're just guessing. Um, but this is, I thought most people probably want to know what your washout is, what causes it, and, and, and what it looks like. So now you've seen it. And so you've learned something today, hopefully. Um, I hope DJI gets onto this. I wouldn't say don't buy the Avata because of it. Because it doesn't seem to happen for normal people using the hand controller and flying gently and smoothly like Cine Whoops are supposed to. It's for people who push the limits a bit. And some people do. And as a result, some people have lost their drones. Now, you might say, well, you shouldn't do these flat yaw turns and with the Avata. It's not designed for that. But to be fair, DJI does have footage on its YouTube channel showing exactly that kind of thing, flat your turns. And if you're going to be using a drone like this to perhaps chase vehicles or people, a flat your turn is something you really want to be able to do because sometimes to get the right footage, you need to do a flat your turn. And if this is going to crash when you do it, yeah, they need to fix that. They need to look at that. Is it a, a fundamental design flaw that can't be fixed due to this tall battery and and so forth? Or can they just reduce the your rate? Or what can they do? I don't know. I think... It must be something that they don't really uh, know about yet, or they would have fixed it, surely. And, uh, you know, this kind of level of flight controller disruption is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Notice another thing which I should bring up. It only does it when you're turning left. And that's another clue, because the Avata is a symmetrical craft on the on the, on the front-to-back axis. It's the same on the left as it is on the right. So you would think that this would do the same thing turning to the right as it would to the left, but I've only ever seen it occurring with a rapid left hand your turn, which to me implies that, well, if you look at the rate gyro, let's have a look at the output you get from, from sorry, the your gyro, the your gyro, when you turn to the left, it will give a, uh, an output like this. And when you turn to the right, it'll give an output like that. So this is the left, this is the right. One will be a positive, one will be a negative. So if you're using software to measure these values, if you've got something wrong, it may be that we're getting so much such a high value out of the gyro for your only when turning left that this triggers a software bug a software bug that causes the flight controller to crash it doesn't happen the other way because this is a negative number it may be subtracted from a thing it never goes into that fault condition maybe just this particular maximum your to the right is helping create this flight controller crash i don't know yeah as I say, it's all speculation but people have been asking and this is my take on it and at the very least you've learned what your washout is why it happens and um, why cine whoops exhibit this but props uh, quads with open props very rarely do because there isn't this turbulating duct to create the turbulent flow of the propeller the you can spin sideways and do really fast yours doesn't cause much of a problem because the air isn't being turbulated before it reaches the prop there's nothing here in a open prop quad to create that turbulence there you go if you've got questions if you've got comments feel free to go down to the comedy section and say so. And then this is the sort of video that Patreons are paying for. And so if you're not a Patreon, you should thank my Patreon supporters. And if you are a Patreon supporter, I thank you. Because without you, I couldn't do this. There's no affiliate links in my description. <laughs> this is the only way I make money out of my YouTube channels because YouTube sucks. Um, but there you go. That's it. I may do another video because one thing I noticed, oh, I think it was Drone Camps, was talking about Ring Vortex. You mentioned Ring Vortex. Nothing to do with Ring Vortex. Nothing at all to do with Ring Vortex. It has nothing to do with it. Totally different phenomenon. If you want to know what a Ring Vortex is, I'll tell you. But it doesn't really apply to our quads because we have so much power compared to the weight that a ring vortex, when, you know, when people talk about prop wash, that's a ring vortex usually. But you just add power and it goes away. 
add power, it goes away. But it's not the same in a manned aircraft. You can have helicopters that enter a ring vortex state and crash into the ground unless they take mitigating moves by flying out of the vortex. If they just try and descend vertically, they can pancake themselves into the deck when they get into a ring vortex state. Our quads, far more power than a helicopter per gram of weight, so we don't have the issue. Anyway, I digress. That's a video for another day. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you want to see more of this stuff, you want to learn more stuff, then subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.